The last record, I think you did pretty much big things with the, or you had big plans at least with the, the live performance. How is that for this record? Is there also something special? In the We've actually completely forgotten about all the past live performances this time now. And we've got, we've actually hired um, a stage designer, um, we've hired um, another like visual artist to come on board and sit down with the projectors. We've still got the projector stuff, mm -hmm. but we've, they're gonna, they've, instead of us having an influence on what's being shown, we've completely left it up to somebody else. Is that a, a, lift, a weight off your shoulders? Yeah, because it means we can concentrate on not just playing, you know. It mm -hmm. means I don't have to worry about doing like animations and all this stuff, mm -hmm. you know. Um, we've completely like designated stuff. I mean, we're going to have the final say whether it's good or not, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but this time, we've just given that to like the tour managers come up with this guy who's meant to who's like a, well, he's meant to be a complete genius on that side of stuff. Mm -hmm. So and he's got loads of visual ideas for stage, for projections, for video, for the whole lot. So we're just going to leave it up to him and see what he comes up with and say yeah we like that or no it's crap. Because mm -hmm. was the, so at some point maybe getting a bit too much doing everything yourself or try, trying to do that thing? Yeah, yourself? kind of. I'm, as, as I'm getting older, I'm, I'm kind of concentrating just on one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. You know, which is just music. Yeah, just music and studio work. Because that's, cause in in, so that's why I'm in the States, because I work in the last studio yeah. over there. So. How's for you now the orchestration or, or the, the, the arrangements for the, for the songs? Is that something also that comes after the, the tracking of the songs? Or? The orchestration? Yeah. Yeah, it usually comes after. Once I've, like, once, like, I've, I've put the structure and arranged the track, um, and I'll just with a real simple drum beat, I'll send it to the drummer and he'll come up with like loads of different drum beats and stuff and I'll sit there, we'll rearrange the, the, the beats mm -hmm. and stuff and to what I think and then I'll send it back to him and I'll say, what do you reckon to this? And he'll say, yeah, cool, or, or no, let me change this beat or let me try this. And, we'll do it. and once we've actually got like a structure we're both happy with, he'll then start coming up with the orchestration parts, orchestral parts, synth parts, because there's a lot of real like dark synths in this album as well yeah. now. Mm -hmm. And then that will come back to me, and then I'll listen through it and go, perhaps, yeah, that's cool. Well, I don't like that bit. That bit's really cool. Mm -hmm. That bit's cool. I'll double this bit. You know, some sections I might go, actually, that's really cool. Well, I'll completely delete the guitars off of that. Yeah. And then it will go through like that, or I might go, that's actually better than the guitar riff. So I'll copy the guitar. So I'll, charge, so I'll copy the synth on the guitar, and then send it back to him. Say, right, I've copied this. Can you write something different on top of it? Mm -hmm. and, and that's and that's it, how it evolves. Then it goes off to down for vocals. How, how do you keep it? Uh, in, in mind that the balance is right, how do you know? Is there some a, a golden rule that you apply to each of the songs, or is it...? Just, I just know. It just... It's using these, it is. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's important as well. Yeah, is, you had a new bass player also. Did he play in the, in the...? in the On the album? Yeah. Yeah, he did. He didn't write with this, but he played on the album. We got him to write on the to like play on the album. It's really good. How, how did it came? Because... Uh, was it, yeah, how did he came? I mean, Dave the left, mm -hmm. um, so we obviously needed somebody else. Yeah. Um, so, and it was Scott, the, the producer of his studio where we recorded the music. He, uh, he, he'd already, like, met Daniel, mm -hmm. um, like, the session before, because he recorded with him before. Yeah. And he goes, I've got a brilliant bass player, I know someone who can easily do it. And on this, on this record, I've, I've done, like, lots of, like, it's like tapping stuff. Like under under like roots and stuff like this, and he's Daniel's copied the same, done loads of tapping stuff on the bass as well, and it, it's come out really really well. Is is the bass now a new dimension, or, 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 or for you maybe now that you know what he's able to do? Oh, I'm going to push him to his limits next one. Yeah, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but was it was the departure of Dave was it a smooth one or something that you were both agreed on? Yeah, no, it surprise? was smooth. You know, personally, I didn't want him to go, but it's something he wanted to do. You know, I was really upset that he left. Um, but because we're like, he's a, he's a really, really good friend of mine, mm -hmm. you know. And but, you know, people, there's, there's things happen, and you know, people like obviously go through changes and stuff. So, what else? What can you do? That's true. Yeah, pursue, pursue your own path, maybe. It's exactly. Free. Is there something still an, an ambition that is unfulfilled for you? Yeah, just I mean, I've, I've, I've got into all aspects of music now. You know, I've started. Um, like teaching guitar over Skype as well, which is which is good fun. To fans or to just people who are interested in just in people who are interested, fans if they want anyone really, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I know when we go on tour in November, I'm starting to like um, promote the fact that I'm going to be each city I go to is give guitar lessons if people are interested, mm -hmm. you know. 
Um, so to do that, be a guitar lessons. It's, it's good fun. To start off with, I absolutely detested teaching. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm a, and I don't like playing on video. People like, ask you before to do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I refused because, and then also people ask me to do like um, play cradle riffs on video. I absolutely detest playing on video because, to me, it feels like I'm giving away um, part of me. I, I like to keep something back, which is a secret. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I like to do. But then I had quite a few people saying, well, you should work giving me guitar lessons. I was like, no, no, and then eventually I've gone, I'll give it a go. You know, so I'm teaching one girl in Philadelphia at the moment. She's, she's really good. And it works, it works really, really well over Skype.